Hey everyone, it's Kelsey AQ Real with Mrs. B, and I'm back today to talk about how to handle unexpected expenses when they come up throughout the month. We all have had it happen, and most recently, we have had three parking bills totaling $60. So first I'm going to give you a little story and then tell you how we handle our unexpected expenses. So each one of these are $20. And uh, so our apartment complex, we get one parking spot uh, included with our rent. And then if you need an additional spot, which we do because we have two cars, it's an additional $20. But it's on a first come first serve basis as in they pretty much give parking passes to everyone who lives here and whoever can find a spot first gets a spot and if you are unfortunate you are parking on the street which really isn't too bad around here there's always spots however the parking in this area is very confusing <laughs> uh, you are supposed to park on one side of the street um, if it's an even day and the other side of the street if it's an odd day between 2 and 6 a.m. for the day before if it was an even or odd day, if that makes any sense, which it doesn't. Um, anyway, uh, I thought that that was only for the winter months. There's actually only certain streets, though, that it's just for the winter months. And you'd think that, you know, they want you to be on one side of the street so then the snow plows can come through. That totally makes sense. But certain streets, it's all year round. Well, uh, my husband parked on one side of the street and we didn't move it the next day because we were gone at a concert and then we came back and it was raining. I parked in front of him along with like there was like five other cars on the same, same side of the street. Well, we didn't realize his car already had a parking ticket on it for, uh, it said just night parking, which I don't, I'm guessing... I'll get to that in a moment. But next morning I come out to get to my car to go walk the dog and both my husband and I both have night parking wrong side of the street tickets on our car. Now I was very upset because I thought I was in the right and I looked up online, found that it does say that it's from uh, December through March that you have to be on one side of the street but then when I looked into it further it was certain streets and our street was not one of them that we do have to be uh, switching back and forth then come to find out um, I I also believe that unless it was stated like they had a sign many streets have signs that say that um, you know no parking unless you have a night parking pass or permit um, I assumed poorly, uh, wrongly, that uh, our street, you did not need a night parking pass uh, permit. And I'm guessing that my husband's first ticket was for not having a permit, even though he was on the correct side of the street. <sighs> so in 48 hours, we acquired $60 of parking fines. Uh, not very happy about it. Uh, so that may be minuscule um, to some people and other people that might screw up their entire budget. So I want to talk about what we do when those things come up. In the past, uh, we've had things come up like we, we did not know that we were going to be paying so much towards taxes. Uh, we had some unexpected medical bills come up and um, we had to pay back our security deposit, things like that. It's bound to happen. So. I have a few notes written down, of course. Uh, first off, uh, you need to, instead of looking towards credit, which is the easy way out, you need to assess the situation because credit is only going to cost you in the long run, both financially and emotionally, because it may be a temporary fix that you're able to solve the problem immediately. Uh, you're gonna end up paying for it more in the future and then that's going to be hanging over you so that's obviously not what we want to do so uh, there's smarter ways to go about doing it so we need to assess the situation one is it an emergency in this case it is not an emergency we have time to pay for this it's not something that needs to be immediately done you need to address that figure out if it is an emergency because you should have an emergency fund put in place if you're following the dave ramsey plan you should have a thousand dollars and even if you're not it 
it helps out so much to have that money put aside. And it's actually quite interesting that even when you have that money, things that come up, you're like, you don't want to touch that money whatsoever. <laughs> even if you in the past would have thought that you needed to pay for that immediately, that it was an emergency, things now don't seem so much as an emergency anymore because there's other ways that you can rework your budget. Uh, so once you decide if it's an emergency or not, obviously if it is, you should dip into your emergency fund and then build it back up once you can pay for it. So you're kind of paying yourself. If it is not a dire emergency, you should um, figure out if it needs to be addressed immediately. Is it something that you need to uh, rework this current budget or is it something in the next you know, few months that you can make sure to either save for or you can rework the next month's budget and be prepared at the beginning of the month for? If it is something that you need to address immediately, uh, for example, if this was due, you know, it's not due until July 9th, um, but if it were the beginning of June, it was due like the middle of June, I would have had to rework our June budget. And um, the way I do that is make sure to take money from unnecessary, non-essential budget categories. So something like eating out or our sinking funds, which sinking funds are fantastic, but they're not essential, especially if we already have money put aside. Um, categories like that that you can rework, take some money from and put it towards what you need it for right now. Uh, you can always build those up later, but you need to address this situation first. If it is in the next month, which this is, <laughs> uh, we did a couple different things. First, temporary fixes. Um, our temporary fix was we need to get a night parking permit. Um, so we had, when we re-signed our lease, we dropped that second parking spot uh, to save the $20 a month. And because my husband is now working till midnight, when you get home at like 1230, there's like never a spot in the parking lot. So why should we pay $20 when he's going to most likely end up on the street anyway? So we're going to pay for the night parking permit, which is still less than paying $20 all year round. So our temporary fix right away was to buy that permit so we can avoid <laughs> any parking uh, fines in the future. Then we needed to um, address this in the next month. Now we have a sinking fund set up for car expenses and that's what it can go into. But that's because we had a sinking fund set up. Otherwise I would take it from other categories. For example, in June, we did pay for that night parking pa uh, permit and it came out of our car fund and we had one over in that category. And we ended up making more income, so we were able to pay for it. So what can you do? You can get rid of non-essentials, or you can get odds and ends jobs to pay for that right away. Something like, I'm a dog walker. I went to care.com. That's my extra little money that I get. Um, you can sell things. Now Facebook has Marketplace. You can sell books at half price books. You can go on Amazon and sell things, eBay, things like that. Uh, get rid of non-essential things. Um, so sell things or rework your budget. If it is something that's not like a fixed price, uh, like your air conditioner um, that you could get at multiple different stores, multiple different uh, variety of brands, things like that, you should then start searching for the best price. Uh, maybe it is something that you can buy off of Amazon or eBay or do a price match or find um, a family member to buy something from somewhere that you can find the best possible price for it. And then if it's something that you need to do now, obviously rework the budget or increase your income. If it is in the future and you know how much the price is now, then you can start putting a little bit of money aside to help pay for that. All right, lastly, my big thing is sinking funds. Now, yes, it's if you're putting money towards sinking funds, you can't obviously put that money towards debt if you're in debt, uh, but it can help you stay out of debt. 
because if you have something that comes up, your sinking funds are there. They're like mini emergency funds that are for specific categories. Now you have that money there to pay for those things instead of getting more in debt. Uh, so I suggest that if you know things are most likely going to come up unexpectedly, like with your car or with health, uh, those are sinking funds that you should set up. So I suggest figuring out um, just a little bit that you can put aside into those funds just in case, and then you will be prepared for any unexpected expenses in the future. So if you guys have any more suggestions that I did not cover, make sure to put them down in the comments below. And remember that I am doing a video every day in July, so I hope to see you guys in the next one. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I hope that all of you have no unexpected expenses come up in July. I'll catch you guys soon. Bye.